As I've shown you in movies throughout this course, you can perform mathematical calculations within Excel VBA. You use the same operators as you would find in the Excel client program. In this movie, I'll show you a number of examples of how to use arithmetic operators in your code. So I'll open up the VBA, the Visual Basic Editor. The first mathematical operator I'll discuss is the equal to sign. I use it here to assign a value to a variable. So the currency total of the first order is equal to 310.25 and of the second it's 102.69. You can use the equal sign in other ways but I'll show you those in later movies. The second operator is addition and that is the plus sign here. So we have the current total is equal to the first order plus the second order. Next you have the minus sign and we use that here to find the difference between two orders. In this case it would be the first order minus the value of the second order. Next up is multiplication, which I have here. It is the asterisk, or a capital 8, if you type the way that I do. What this code does is it finds the total of the first order, multiplies the first order's value by the sales tax, which is 9%, and then rounds off that value to two decimal points. Next up is division, and this is standard division, or decimal division. Let's say the two trees wanted to find out the profit ratio for each bottle. In other words, the amount they sell it for versus the amount it costs them to make. They can calculate that by using division. They just divide the bottle price that they sell it for by the cost per bottle, and then they round that off to two digits. Next you have exponentiation, or raising something to a power. You don't use it very often in standard business transactions, but you do when you calculate interest. So let's say that Two Trees wanted to find an investment where their interest was compounded continuously. For that, you do need to use exponentiation. So let's say that you invested $100,000, and the rate was 4%, and the number of years, or the number of periods, was 10. To calculate the future value of the investment, you would take the investment and multiply it by 1 plus the rate, which is 0 0.04, and raise that value to the exponent, which is the number of periods, which I have made 10. And then the round function rounds the value off to two decimal places. Now, I've already covered decimal division, which allows a remainder, but let's talk about two other types of division, integer division and modular division. Integer division divides one number by another and discards the remainder. Modular division divides one number by another and keeps the remainder only. If two trees wanted to know how many individual bottles they would have left over after putting together their 13 bottle baker's dozen cases, they could use modular division. And now I have a code routine here that walks through each of these calculations. So I will press F5 and show you how it works. So first we have the total. This is arithmetic addition. Click OK. This is subtraction, the minus sign. The difference between the two order totals is 2756. Next, we have the price with tax of 338.17. That's multiplication. Then we have division, which was the profit ratio. On each bottle, that's 2.57. Then we have the investment, which at 4% interest over 10 years, $100,000 would be worth $148,024.43. Based on 81 bottles, you can make six baker's dozen cases, each of which contain 13. And finally, at the end, you would have three bottles left over. The mathematical operators in Excel VBA let you calculate any values you need. You might not use integer division and modular division as often as you use the other operations, but they're handy tools to have at your disposal.